Hey everybody, I'm still working on that Lion King review, but I also saw a couple movies that I want to talk about, so let's talk about them. One film I saw is a documentary called Some Kind of Heaven by Lance Oppenheim. This is his feature-length directorial debut, and it's also produced by Darren Aronofsky. This documentary follows residents of The Villages in Florida, which is America's largest retirement community. Elderly people from all over the country wind up moving into this strange bubble in the hopes that they can reconnect with their youth. At points, this almost feels like some kind of cult. There are points in this film where I was reminded of Disneyland and other points where I was reminded of the Pantheon Bar in the Holy Mountain. Now, as you might have guessed, this documentary winds up covering individuals that didn't exactly get the full Fantasyland dream experience out of it. The characters that this documentary decides to cover are all very watchable and interesting. The personality of this film is very clear and memorable. As you can see, there are interesting choices with the aspect ratio and overall visual style. This film is very well shot and there's a few sequences that really blur the line between documentary and fictional narrative. Not necessarily in terms of the narrative itself, but especially the way it's shot. There are some parts of the film that kind of give off Wes Anderson-y vibes at points. There are some slow zoom sequences that I really loved. And because of the unique way it's filmed, there are also some points where I was impressed by the audio. If you can hear the subjects, then they have to be mic'd up somehow, and there are points in the film where it was not obvious how it was done. The musical score for this film complements it very well and really adds to the film's tone and personality. There's a really great energy to the music in this film, and I love that it doesn't explicitly tell you how to feel in any given scene. This film has a great sense of pacing, and with a runtime of 81 minutes, it definitely does not overstay its welcome. The editing in this film helps it move along nicely without it feeling stale, and there are also a few really clever choices in the editing, when to cut, what to cut to, when and how to end the music in a scene. These choices added to the humor in the film, and they also very much added to the personality. There are many points in this film that I found to be genuinely hilarious, there were also points that were sad, endearing, and heartfelt. The great variety of characters in this film really helps to bring out a variety of emotions. Overall, I found it to be awesome and pretty beautiful. So yeah, check this one out whenever you can, and it'll be getting a theatrical and digital release on January 15th. And I'm giving this one an 8 out of 10. Another film I saw was The Dissident. This is the newest documentary from Brian Fogel, who directed Icarus in 2017. This documentary covers the events surrounding the murder of Washington Post journalist journalist Jamal Khashoggi, and because this documentary is very critical of the Saudi royal family, they actually had a lot of trouble distributing it and no streaming service wanted to touch it. It's pretty disappointing just how much influence money plays over politics and speech, and this film definitely covers that because this is not the only instance where this happens. This is a pretty important film to watch, and much of what it covers is very eye-opening. However, from a perspective of tone and presentation, this documentary definitely could use some work. There are quite a lot of points in this documentary where the seriousness of the subject is undermined by the cheesiness of the presentation, whether it's the music or the animations or the transition effects. There are so many elements to this film that are frustratingly and obnoxiously overkill. Thankfully, this doesn't ruin the whole movie, but given the subject matter, it's a bit disappointing that there are parts of this film that are difficult to take seriously. Still, for the most part, this documentary is pretty insane and engaging. There are some fascinating scenes revolving around phone hacking and Jeff Bezos. There's a good amount of information that I didn't previously know about this historic event. In terms of pacing and structure, there are parts that definitely could have been trimmed down. There are parts in the first half of the film that start to feel pretty stagnant, but from the halfway point to the very end of the film, it is incredibly engaging. So yeah, check out this documentary whenever you can, and if you live in Saudi Arabia, maybe use a VPN or something. Despite my criticisms, it is still a very solid and watchable documentary. If the entire movie was like the first half of it, then I would probably give it a 6 out of 10, and if the entire movie was like the second half of it, then I'd probably give it an 8 out of 10. So as you can probably guess, I'm giving this one a 7 out of 10. Thank you. Going down and down and down and down and down and down and deeper. I never go to sleep, but I try to be a dreamer.